What if the sun had an evil twin? The concept might sound like just another wild conspiracy theory, but it's actually a popular idea among many mainstream astronomers, one that seems to be gaining momentum with each passing year. Astronomers call this hypothetical twin Nemesis, and it could be hurtling towards the Earth at this very moment. But how could this affect our solar system? Is there any evidence to suggest that Nemesis even exists? Let's find out. The basic concept is quite simple. Far beyond the outer reaches of our solar system, past the Oort cloud, there is a hypothetical sun that orbits us at a long elliptical orbit. In fact, the orbit of Nemesis takes about 26 million years to complete. This twin star is believed to be either a red or brown dwarf. This means that it is much smaller in mass compared to our own star. It may also have its own planets. The most convincing evidence of Nemesis is the fact that virtually all stars have companions. This means that it would be incredibly rare if our sun did not have a twin of some kind. There are also some strange gravitational anomalies that suggest some unknown force is acting upon some of our planets. The dwarf planet Sedna is a clear example, as something seems to be keeping it from moving closer to our solar system. There are a few things we know about DGCVN. It is an M-class star, also called a red dwarf, and is located only about 60 light years away. It's a dim little red star. It has a luminosity that's about 1,000th the luminosity of the sun. It has a mass that's about one-third the mass of the sun, and a radius that's about one-third the radius of the sun. While not a threat to us, the massive flares of red dwarf stars can help us better understand the flares produced by our own sun. They are also of interest because red dwarf stars are often orbited by planets. Some data suggest that 40% of red dwarfs have super-Earth-type planets orbiting in a habitable zone where liquid water is possible. If this is true, then they are good candidates for supporting life. That something could be Nemesis. But perhaps the greatest evidence of Nemesis comes not from our stars, but from beneath our feet. The word Nemesis conjures up unsettling feelings and themes. A Nemesis is someone's arch enemy, a rival of unparalleled danger. So what's so bad about our sun having a twin? Why did astronomers decide to give this star such an evil name? To answer that question, you'd have to examine the fossil record. And when you look at these fossils, it's clear that something destroys almost all living things on our planet every 27 million years. The chronology is eerily precise, almost like clockwork. These mass extinction events are usually accompanied by massive meteor impacts, and the last one of these saw the complete annihilation of the dinosaurs along with 70% of all species. So what does Nemesis have to do with meteors? The theory is that when Nemesis approaches our solar system on its long elliptical orbit, it disturbs the asteroid belt. Suddenly, giant chunks of icy rock are flung towards Earth, and with so many flying towards us, it's almost impossible to avoid an impact. Of course, there's always a chance our planet might emerge from this asteroid minefield unscathed, which might explain why we're currently 30 million years overdue for a mass extinction level event. Some say that while the sun was initially born with a twin, this companion eventually faded off into the Milky Way billions of years ago. Many scientists also claim that with our advanced telescope technology, 
we would have spotted a brown dwarf if it existed anywhere near our solar system. But even our most powerful infrared telescopes have been unable to detect anything suspicious within 10 light years of our sun. Others point out that the gravitational anomalies can be explained by other factors, such as the Shiva hypothesis, or stars moving past our solar system. With all that said, it's worth mentioning that Nemesis could be so dim that it's almost impossible to see with even the best telescopes. It might be a so-called dark star that is virtually invisible. Mainstream astronomers assure us that Nemesis isn't real. They say that their telescopes are so advanced that if there was something out there, they would have already seen it. But here's the thing. We're constantly discovering new planets and objects in our solar system. Objects that no one knew existed a few years ago. Sedna is a great example, and one day we might find the mysterious planet 9 that so many astronomers have been searching for. The point is, we can't even see beyond the Oort cloud. In fact, no one is even sure the Oort cloud exists. So if we can't see that far, then how can we say with absolute certainty that Nemesis isn't out there? The truth is that there might be hundreds of planets in our solar system, including Nibiru, Maldek, and other objects that appear in ancient inscriptions. Astronomers have also suggested that there may be an object in the Oort cloud called Teich, a gas giant that could be the real cause of mass extinctions on Earth. No matter how you slice it, our solar system still holds many mysteries. On one hand, this realization makes our reality vastly more interesting. Imagine staring up at the night sky and seeing a strange new object, something that no human has ever seen before. On the other hand, this strange, beautiful light may get bigger and bigger with time, and it ultimately impacts our planet and spells doom for the entire human race and almost every other living thing on Earth. If a mass extinction happens every 27 million years, perhaps it's meant to be. Many people believe that humanity is a cancer on our planet, consuming all of its resources and slowly killing our world. And perhaps Nemesis is the universe's natural, fail-safe system that wipes the slate clean. <laughs>